All right, family, we are live. I know it's early in the morning. I just went live on my sports channel. Yeah, it got the notification. Make sure you turn your notifications on. All right. Um, but I just went live on my sports channel talking about LeBron James signing to the Lakers. And now that I have my uh, my account restored on my main channel or this channel, I can go live anytime I want. So when you come into the room, make sure you hit that like button. And um, I'm not going to be on here for too long because I got to take my kids to summer camp. And we just got back from vacation in Orlando. If you follow me on Instagram, you know exactly where I came from. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun out there. Um, this topic I wanted to talk about since the album dropped, but I never got a chance because I was on vacation. But I've been listening to that album. And I'm talking about Drake's album, Scorpion. Um, and and let, me, let me be honest, though. Um, hold on. Before I get into that, before I get into that, let me make sure I see my chat because I don't see nobody coming in yet. Um, hold on one second. I don't see nobody coming in yet. Regardless, I just want to see the chat. If, if I know it's early in the morning and stuff like that. So I just want to see the actual chat. Um, okay, here we go. All right, good stuff. Okay. All right, so um, like I was saying, um, yeah, the Drake album just dropped. And um, uh, initially, <laughs> I'm not a huge Drake fan, first of all. You know, um, I've actually never really listened to a whole album of Drake all the way through. This album, Drake, was the first album I've listened to all the way through. Okay. Um, so I must say it's a decent, it's a pretty decent album. At first, I didn't understand the whole double album thing because that double album thing is like, that's like some all eyes on me, early 2000s late 1990s type type of uh you know ideology because who releases double albums now you know people want like 10 track albums or less you know quick fast in a hurry but now I understand he's trying to fulfill his contract obligations with cash money and baby so he's trying to fulfill the amount of songs and albums he's he's you know trying to get that out of the out of the way so he can become a free agent um, and get out of the contract with uh, cash money. You know what I'm saying? So um, I understand that now. So it makes sense. But it's a pretty decent album. And like I said, the only only reason why I listened to the whole album was because of Pusha T. Uh, with the with the battle between Pusha T and, and, and Drake and um, the fact that Pusha T dropped the story of Adi Don and the things he said on there were so scathing. Um, when the first drop, it was like, well, you know, he's just, he doesn't really know if he has a baby and, 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 um, you know, he's a deadbeat father. People were, people were questioning the validity of his statements. And I'll get to the blackface and the blackface photo in a minute. Cause that's, cause that is the, that is the elephant in the room that needed a more thorough explanation. The blackface photo needed a more thorough explanation the blackface photo was the most damaging thing that was done to drake bottom line that supersedes the deadbeat the deadbeat daddy thing because the blackface photo represents only one thing and it represents the 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 blackface photo represents one thing and that is submitting to white supremacy that's all that means you know what i'm saying What's good, Water Sniper? What's good? I know it's early. Um, I decided I decided to do this uh, this live stream real early. Uh, I got my Lakers gear on because I was talking about LeBron James signing to um, uh, the Lakers on my video on my sports channel, GMOG Sports TV. So I'm excited. So I woke up with Lakers. I woke up like this, basically. <laughs> I woke up like this. But anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, yeah, so I think you know the blackface photo was the most damaging thing 
that was done to Drake, right? And it needed a more thorough explanation because he did some Insta story explanation talking about, you know, um, I did this to bring awareness to struggling black actors. And I had a, a black friend who was a struggling black actor, yada, yada, yada. I didn't buy that. Push it in by that. It needed a more thorough explanation. Um, and um, on the album, he addressed him being a father. He said that he was hiding his child from the world. So here's the thing, right? He did a lot of explanations to what Pusha T said on the story of Adi and I, but basically he validated everything that Pusha T said as true. So when you have to explain yourself and dismiss the blackface photo, that pretty much solidifies the victory that Pusha T did with his diss track, The Story of Adidon. So that basically solidifies and, and down in history that Pusha T took down Drake, the most popular rapper in the world. He took him down to the point where he had to make several statements in song form to address uh, his child and things of that nature on this album, you know. Um, and like I said, I heard the album and it was it was pretty decent. Um, what threw me off, though, was the Jay-Z track, because I've been listening to the Jay-Z and, and Beyonce album a lot. And, um, you know, on, on that album, he was addressing Drake by, you know, talking about uh, Drake not signing with title and him. Drake pretending to be a boss and stuff like that. I, I didn't I understand. So I don't know if that was recorded before or after, you know, him uh, dissing Drake. I don't know. But it, it, but anyway, Jay had the best verse on the whole album on on Scorpion. When he talked about um, Triple X Tentacion and how he's dead and George Zimmerman is still alive. And I've been saying that since since X got killed i'm like oh, where is the same energy for george zimmerman why is he still breathing you know what i'm saying so uh that was a, that was a great verse by, by jay great verse but um as far as like i said as far as the blackface photo that was not addressed on the album and the reason why it wasn't addressed on the album because simply um and i've talked about this before there was an article that came out in early 2017 where Drake says he only experienced racism in America once he became a famous rapper. He's never experienced racism in Canada. He doesn't understand the black American racism, white supremacy experience. What he doesn't understand is that racism, white supremacy is worldwide. So he doesn't understand what it is and how it works. He doesn't know anything about Nilly Fuller. And so he's one of these lost Negroes, these mulattoes, these tragic mulattoes that can play both sides of the fence because he was raised by a Jewish mother. Right. And he played, you know, obviously he was an actor in Degrassi. And then after that, he became Drake discovered by Jazz Prince the son of uh, Jay Prince and the rest is history. Right. Um, so he doesn't identify with racism at all because he says he never experienced racism until he reached America. He doesn't understand the core foundation of what racism, white supremacy is. He doesn't know how he doesn't know how to articulate that stuff. So the blackface photo Going back to the blackface photo is a total contradiction to what he said in his statement about he's never experienced racism until he became a famous rapper in America. Why in the world would you do a blackface photo knowing the history, knowing the severity of blackface and how uh, black people, people classified as black, had to submit to white supremacy to entertain them? 
right? As sambos, sucking, uh, shucking and jiving, cooning, etc. When you never experienced racism of that magnitude until you reached America, when and when that photo came out, and this shows how demoralizing and cunning and precise the push a T this record it was an abomination in terms of what he did to Drake and for me one of the best this records of all time but anyway um this shows you that the blackface photo was something that he he was something that he never fully understood because again, he's never experienced racism until he reached America as a famous rapper. So when he's saying he was trying to bring awareness to struggling black actors, trying to get roles, right? During the time he took the photo, he was still in Degrassi. So he never experienced racism when he took that photo. It's a total contradiction. So this is a guy that doesn't know, does, first of all, this is a guy that does not understand how racism white supremacy works he cannot articulate it properly right for him to fully understand what's going on and on his album he only addressed basically in confirming what Pusha T said about his son Adonis and you know he's saying that he you know, he's a single father didn't want to have that same cycle as his as his real dad so it was a really demoralizing um response to what really happened and the fact that you have to have other people who invested in you such as jay prince to speak on your behalf um that shows a sign of weakness meaning you have you lack you have lack of power and authority over your career right so like i said this this to me you know and i think it's obvious that Pusha T definitely won this battle. It solidified as a diss track that took down Drake in terms of, you know, just a, a lyrical battle. Obviously, Drake's popularity is going to always continue to be through the roof because he's a pop rapper. And that's why he was able to break these streaming records of what, what was our saw 170 million streams or whatever the case may be, you know, um, with the double album. So his fans. Uh, his fans don't care long term, you know. They they don't care about that stuff, you know. The 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 same fans that, especially his his casual fans, his casual fans don't know nothing about Pusha T clips, you know, um, stuff like that. They they don't listen to they don't listen to uh, records like Pusha T because Pusha T is a pure lyricist, you know, and he's a street lyricist. And he stays in his lane. He doesn't go out of pocket. He doesn't try to be something that he's not, you know. Um, so I think, um, like I said, this, it just basically solidifies the, the victory that Pusha T did um, versus uh, Drake. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, the album's decent. It's a decent album. Not really my cup of tea in terms of, like, the body of work. Um I'm not really too keen about the singing on the album that much, but like I said, the only reason why I listened to this whole album was because of Pusha T. I wanted to see what he would say in terms of what Pusha T said about him. I know he didn't have any direct replies to the story of Adi Don because <laughs> his investor, Jay Prince, told him not to. You know, his boss slash investor slash advisor jay prince is the al hamer of hip-hop basically <laughs> so his advisor told him not to reply with the disc record because he didn't want to go into a quote-unquote dark place but um you know the disc record obviously didn't hurt his record sales and popularity this made him more popular but in terms of uh rap battle he lost and it's obvious he lost you know and the fact that uh he had to kind of uh, alter a lot of records because of the story of Adi Don on his album. You know, um, before prior to the story of Adi Don, he had uh, what he had those two singles, God's God's Plan and Nice for What, right? Those are the radio singles he got, which are still, you know, all over the radio right now. 
but he had to you had to change and alter some songs or add some additional songs because of what Pusha T said. You know what I'm saying? That's how damaging it was. And again, he did all of that and did not address the blackface photo. Why? Because he doesn't understand how racism, white supremacy works. So that means he's a lost Negro. That's what that means. He's a lost Negro. You know? And um, again, racism, white supremacy is a worldwide phenomenon. You know, he says he never experienced racism until he reached America. I'm pretty sure he has. Everybody's affected. If you're classified as black or African-American, you are you have you are a victim of racism, white supremacy. So systemically. He's been affected by racism in Canada and he didn't even know it. And that's unfortunate. And that's unfortunate because a lot of black people, especially if you're a if you're in a uh, in a more economically established position, or you're just more financially, you know, aware and financially secure, you live in a nice neighborhood, you know, got a nice job and all this stuff, and you yourself have never really experienced racism. Right. Just like a Drake. Uh, you're in a bubble. You have. You just don't even know it. So everybody who is classified as black or African-American are victims of racism, white supremacy. Whether you want to, you know, you know, accept it or not, you're a victim and you are still um, affected by racism, white supremacy. Because the totality of the transatlantic slave trade that happened over 500 years is still affecting us today. So we're always going to be affected by racism, white supremacy, and it's a worldwide phenomenon. Right? It's a worldwide phenomenon. And it's a it is, it is a uh, domino effect that has been lingering for over 500 years. Right? So your father Drake, if it wasn't for the transatlantic slave trade, your father would have never met your mother, all right, and created you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that can go real, real deep in terms of how that works, but he doesn't understand that. So when people, when people don't understand that, they're completely lost and don't understand how racism, white supremacy works and how it affects black people. You know what I'm saying? Just systemically. They don't understand how that works. So. So anyway, family, those are my thoughts on that. Um, that's all I wanted to talk about real quick. I just, like I said, I just got back from vacation. Check out my Instagram page. You'll see where I went. Had a lot of fun in Orlando. Wish I would have stayed longer. Um, and um, this week, basically, I'm on vacation this week as well for a so-called uh, Fourth of July. Yeah, Fourth of July. Got this entire week off as well. So I'm going to push out more content for you guys. And um, make sure you stay tuned. I'll, you know, I may do a live stream. I may, may do a regular video. But now that I can do these live streams again, you know what I'm saying, um, there's no telling what I'll do. So, you know, we'll see what happens. So anyway, those are my thoughts about that, about the Drake, his album, and why he didn't address the blackface photo. You know what I'm saying? So, um that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to get that off my chest because I wanted to talk about this since the album dropped and I was on vacations. So I couldn't do that. So now that I'm back, I can start pushing out more content with you guys and make sure you guys subscribe to my sports channel, GMOG Sports TV. Link is down below in the description. All right, family. So anyway, until next time, family, Sean C, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.